Who wants to know what it takes to make a grid-based movement system with pad mining? Hello, my name's Alan, and I am prototyping tools for a tactics game that I'm making. For this video, I wanted to get my main man Ted onto our previously built map generator and get him moving around with this basic pathfinding system. And it went pretty well. So buckle up, pause the video, grab a cup of tea, come back, sit down, like the video, unpause the video, and let's jump into it and break down how I did what I did. We can break down the grid movement into three steps. First, calculate the movement range of your dude and display where, what tiles you can move to. Second is then select where we want to move to within that range and create a path, find the shortest possible path to that tile. And then third is how do you is display that information to the user. You're typically using like an, a directional arrow to choose the path that your character is going to take. And now I'm going to send you to past Aaron who's going to explain how it all works. Right, so rather than just watching my ugly face waffling on about trying to explain this here, I thought it might be better to open up a wee canvas on a sprite and see if I can explain it this way. So step one is to figure out how far can Ted move and where can Ted move to, every possible square Ted can move to. So let's say Ted has a movement range of two, as you can tell up here with my amazing um, cartography. So Ted is at point zero like so and what we're going to do is we need to figure out how many steps it takes ted to get to each square and stop once we hit um, ted's max range of two so we start from our location we just go outward to our to where we can move to it goes one 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 we do it again two 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 like that and we end up with this nice diamond shape wonderful yeah. and that's all there is to it for a basic shape you just keep it's just four loops really it's just a lot of four loops to try and to try and get to this stage then let's say we want to add some kind of custom variables to these sprites to these uh, tiles should I say for example let's do here let's say this one is a water tile and you can't walk on it right it's just that is just uh, just an absolute mess there you go just like that you can't go we can't go there a lot of shit we can't go there so because we can't go there suddenly we, now this is blocked off this now takes goes from this goes from being a value of two to a value of four it should land us shortcuts for a sprite so now it takes instead of take, being able to get there on two we get there on four steps so it's no longer within our range and also let's say we wanted a tile that was like um, mud or something like something that would be harder to travel through so let's this one so this takes double the steps to get through just take this and this becomes a two if I goes out becomes a two and this one becomes a three and you can't go there and that's just how complicated it is to get where um, someone can move to so we can move with Ted's movement of two we can get to any of these squares yeah and that's kind of it so after this now we need to pick a square we want to move to and we need to use path finding to figure out how to get there the shortest possible path to get there so let's do you know what just just for the sake of this explanation i want to this let's just say ted's um, movement is actually three instead of two all right so it's three instead of two look how i did that's amazing so now we can update our graph to represent all of our trees oh <laughs> oh wow all right so now we can move this is where we can move to now he was able to everywhere we can move to with this range and let's say we want to move to here let's move to this one so all we got to do is check all of our from our starting position we check all of the available tiles and we just use distance we, we compare the distance of all the of all the tiles and we just pick the closest one so in this this one here is the closest one in this situation so we take our so that we pick that one and then from this tile we do the exact same thing we check all the available tiles which one's closest this one's closest to that one same again this one and boom we found our spot and that's it now i'm sure there's probably a more efficient way to do that this you might notice i haven't been showing any code this video at all because um it's kind of all theory and i'm not comfortable saying that this is like the way to do it or saying that this is a tutorial i'm just because i'm just i'm just a guy trying to figure some stuff out yeah so so it's it's literally kind of doing the same steps as the previous one of finding the available squares except now we're just picking one and then we do it again we loop through the four steps and we just we do a distance check we move up and that's and, that, and it works pretty well i feel yeah so yeah sweet uh then the final thing is how do you display this to the user the typical way would be to uh, the classic way should i say would be to um would be to, with arrows right that's like the tactics way of doing things is using arrows so let's just draw a nice little arrow up here Boom. right and then we would display so this is how you be show the user this is the where ted's gonna go and you know this this itself has some complexity to it so there's three sprites here basically we're drawn right we're drawn a movement like this a straight line straight line and then the arrow at the end so hang on i'm not happy with that so a curl 
KO. That why does this just it just looks so shit? All right, there, that's a KO. That's a KO and a half. Um, a straight line, and then the arrow. So we got three sprites. Now, how do we how do we figure out which sprite we want to draw on top of a tile? Um, we basically need to figure out two directions on each tile. So we need to know the direction it's come from and the direction it's going. So let's say that there's so there's eight possible directions we can go with this amazing little graph I did over here that you can tell. And how you calculate the direction is that let's say we have two our two vectors here. So we have a two locations here. So Ted is at Ted is at zero zero. He's moving to minus one zero, and we just minus them. So the direction is minus one zero in this situation, right? So it's yeah, so it's minus one zero. So that's where he's coming from. So over here the direction is minus one zero. Then we do it again for the net for the future location, the one ahead of time. So we do um this is this is minus one one. It's moving up. We minus them again. We know the direction is zero one, like so. So then within uh uh within us within a class we, we take our two directions our future direction and our past direction and we know when we can parse that into our uh to select our to select our sprite that we want and that's what gets drawn on top we do the same for here so this is just 0101 you don't need to do the calculation again because i think you guys would get it and then for the final one we know that it's coming from 01 but the future tile is null so because it's the future tile is null we know it has to be an owl sprite but it's coming it's coming from an upward direction so it's an upward um owl and that's and that's it that's basically the entire movement system explained and i guess if you want to know how you move ted you just you just tween it so you just over time let's say you want to make him um lisa oh, I'm, I'm using lean tween so you're just using tweening so let's say you want him to move to this tile you just you just you just move two pass over x seconds x time and then you pop it off the, the list and then you're just going up you get addition but that's that's not it so i wouldn't worry too about it whatever whatever you want to do yeah and that's it that's it hopefully i explained that well um <laughs> yeah thanks back to uh future Alan to explain the rest of the video yeah, so a lot of good progress made this sprint. Hope that explanation was good. I thought it was kind of just off the cuff. I'm trying to be more efficient with my time um, instead of using like After Effects or something like that. So so hopefully that was good for you. Still not fully finished yet. Still a lot of work to do around something like I want to implement height. So the movement system, including height. That's really the biggest, the biggest challenge coming on. But, you know, I, I realized that this is a prototype and I kind of just want to get on with it and get the actual prototype done before because I, I tend to get stuck in all the technicals and yeah I just fucking end up wasting a bunch of time another another problem not problem but another another thing that needs to be improved is that if you've seen earlier videos you'll know that I'm trying to make everything modular so nothing's dependent on each other everything is its own tool or its own it works in its own its own way that's not the case right now poor Ted is entangled in the tile map he is just he is just trapped and he can't get it. <laughs> it's just trying to get it all working. That's how it ended up. So, so it all has to be refactored and get the pathfinding system and the tile map out of Ted and leave him alone. Yeah, so I'm sure there's a fucking mountain of bugs as well, but you know, it, it, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. We'll figure it all out. Well, that's, well, that's, oh, 100 subscribers. Woo, woo. Didn't think that was going to happen. The last, last week, last, last two weeks, I, I jokingly said, uh, 100 subscribers, and I didn't think it was actually going to happen. Um, so yeah, so it does thanks. I think there's like, I don't know, like almost 30 new subscribers since the last video and that's huge for me i never seen anything like that before on my channel on any channel i ever i ever played with so yeah just just to all the new people and everyone who has been commenting and stuff just thanks again this stuff doesn't come naturally to me at all i'm very strange right now looking at i feel very strange right now looking at my phone <laughs> and just talking to myself but uh yeah just just uh thanks thanks guys it really means a lot and next up is tone based mechanics so we got to get someone on the board with Ted and have them taking turns moving and yeah so that's next hopefully I don't think it'll be as complicated as the initial tone based uh, as the initial movement system but yeah that's what's next and I will see you in two weeks if that interests you if that interests you like and subscribe and then I'll see you in two weeks cheers bye